breaking news. Canon Rumors has leaked the new Canon R5C, an upgraded version of the famous Canon R5 that really is genuinely going to be enough to make me switch over from Sony if it is what they say it is. I'm going to go over the leaked specs and talk about what this means and what this new camera is going to cost, as well as who it's really for. First of all, let me ask the question, why does the Canon R5 overheat? Some of you will say, oh, it's because Canon put in software limits into the firmware timers that would prevent it from recording over a certain amount of time. Others of you will say, well, they didn't create efficient enough cooling systems so that it can record, say, 8K video for an extended period of time. I think the real reason the R5 overheats is that Canon wanted to make this R5C cinema camera. They wanted to sell you basically the same camera for a much higher price. And this makes a lot of sense if you're the number one camera manufacturer, which Canon is. Canon's primary competitor is themselves. Their cameras compete against each other more than they compete with any other manufacturer. Canon's afraid of something called cannibalization, which is a business term that means that you create one product that actually steals revenue from another product, meaning you put a bunch of work in to make something new, but you have net zero on the revenue. They don't want that. They want to specifically differentiate the stills-oriented products from the cinema-oriented products, and they don't want the video capabilities of the stills products to become so powerful that they cannibalize their cinema lineups, which are actually priced a lot more. Now, Canon has made a cinema version of a stills camera in the past. In 2013, Canon released the Canon 1DC for $15,000, and that's $2013. That was almost the exact same camera as the original Canon 1DX, which was $6,800. Some people said the hardware was identical, and the only difference was a firmware update. Other people said there were a couple small tweaks, but either way, they had the same sensor, the same body, and they were near indistinguishable. But what the 1DC could do was it could record 4K video, which at the time was a really novel feature. It also had unlimited recording times and, you know, Canon Log and a few other cinema-oriented features, but in a stills body. That's what I think the Canon R5C is going to be. It's going to start with a stock Canon R5. And according to Canon rumors, it will make the body just a little bit bigger, probably to accommodate some active cooling features, like it's a fan. It's going to have some kind of fan that can blow. Now, when they put a fan into a video camera like that, obviously you don't want the mic picking up the fan, so they give you some ability to control it. It's typically very quiet. The fan probably won't be a problem, except that it will prevent the camera from overheating. Canon Rumors also says that it's going to offer Canon Log 2, C Log 2, which is just a way to capture more dynamic range in the video. That feature would allow filmmakers to more easily mix and match the footage from this camera and Canon's other cinema cameras. That's all Canon Rumors has given us, and I totally believe that the R5C is coming. It makes perfect sense, and I can also take some pretty good guesses at other features that it's going to have. It's certainly going to have unlimited recording times because all their cinema cameras have unlimited recording times. Overheating aside, the recording on the Canon R5 is limited to 30 minutes. Historically, this 30-minute limit was put in place because laws in Europe added extra taxes to video cameras that were not applied to stills cameras. And the way that law differentiated stills and video cameras is that video cameras could record for more than 30 minutes, stills cameras could record for less than 30 minutes. That law has been abolished for some time now. You no longer have to pay extra taxes on video cameras. And yet, that 30-minute time limit remains, at least in the Canon world. Most other camera manufacturers don't do that. Why would Canon artificially limit recording times to 30 minutes? Well, it's a feature that's super useful to cinematographers, videographers. You know, if you're a wedding photographer and you're also shooting the video of the wedding, you often just want to start a camera up in the corner of the room and let it roll while you go off and shoot. And you don't know how long the ceremony is going to be. It might end up being longer than 30 minutes, and you don't want the camera to shut off right before they say, I do, right? So recording longer than 30 minutes is absolutely a must-have for a lot of videographers. I also think it will record video to both card slots. Now, 
our Canon R5 will write still photos to both card slots, but it will only write video to one card slot, unless you're talking about a proxy, which we'll do for the 8K. But redundancy is really, really important. Even in the last six months, I've had, I think, two corrupted video files on my A7S Mark III, where I had to go back and pull the backup card. Now, video files are really, really large, and the amount of failures and corruption that you get is directly proportionate to the amount of data that you're writing. And we shoot in 4K60. If you're writing in 8K, you actually have double that resolution. And thus, double the number of bits being written to a memory card, you're going to have roughly twice the chance that some particular bit is going to be corrupted and make that video file unreadable. And thus, it's an absolute requirement for our YouTube channel our video business that we record video to two card slots because you can't go back and re-record everything, right? Especially if you're filming a wedding. What are you going to do if a file gets corrupted and you're just like, oh, I just, sorry. <laughs> you have no video of your wedding because this particular file got corrupted. It doesn't even have to be the whole card that crashes, but one particular file can be corrupted. Anyway, that's why we don't record our out and about videos on Canon cameras. We use the Sony A7S Mark III. Because it's gonna be a cinema camera, you'll also be able to use Canon's cinema professional support. Canon, we have Canon's professional support for photographers. It means that if a lens or camera breaks, they'll get us a, a loaner or a repair much faster than they do just regular folks, right? So they have the same thing for cinema cameras for people using their cinema line of gear, and this will fit into the, there. And thus, if you use their support, that could be an important factor. I'm also speculating that it might have a hot shoe mic connection. On our Sony cameras, we're able to plug a microphone directly into the hot shoe, no extra cables. And it's an incredibly useful feature for modern videographers because that one cable is one more thing to fail. Something that could be caught on something and knocked loose and just mean that you don't have sound or you have messed up sound. It's so useful to get both audio and power through that connection. No extra batteries to fail. It's something that we absolutely love about the Sony cameras and we've been talking about a lot. And you know what? The stuff we talk about and the stuff we like tends to work its way into future video products. Canon has been making microphones for a long time. There's no reason they couldn't route audio through the hot shoe. And I'm hoping they introduce that in this generation of camera. It would make a lot of sense for what would be the ultimate vlogging camera. I also think another thing they're going to add to this is uh, more price. Like they're going to crank the price way, way up. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Why would Canon not just make this into a cinema body? Just take the guts of the R5, the 8K 30 video, the raw video, and stick it into something that looks more like one of their cinema cameras. Well, because they want to target hybrid shooters. This is still a stills body. They want you to be able to pick it up and shoot stills just like you would for an R5, but then be able to shoot video without those mostly artificial limitations that they put in there to prevent cannibalizing their cinema line. They want, they want to give you those features. They just want to sell you them to you for a reasonable price so that all their cinema people don't stop buying cinema cameras and buy the $3,900 R5. I also think part of the reason for this release might be the Sony Alpha 1. Sony Alpha 1 seemed to very directly target the R5, especially in the video realm. It had 8K, 30 frames per second, 4K at 120 frames per second. It did the exact same things, except, well, it would record video to two card slots and it lacked that flip forward screen. It also has that hot shoe mic connection that I was just talking about. So for people like me, the Sony Alpha 1 and the Sony A7S III have been our video cameras of choice, but I actually really like the Canon R5 for stills. And when I travel, I would love to be able to travel with a single camera that can do everything. Because right now, my travel gear is a Sony Alpha 1 for shooting stills and a Sony A7S III for shooting video. And if one of them fails, I could grab the other and use it, but in a severely degraded fashion because the A7S III isn't nearly as good for stills and the Alpha 1 isn't as good for video without that flip forward screen that creators like myself really need. The Canon R5C could give you the best of both worlds, the best video camera capabilities with really the best stills shooting capabilities. The R5 costs $3,900 and Canon is definitely going to charge way more. I'm not sure what that number is going to be, 
My guess is they're going to exactly target the Alpha 1 price at $6,500. Doesn't match the Alpha 1 feature by feature. The Alpha 1 shoots 30 frames per second and it has an integrated wired Ethernet adapter and a few other features that the Canon R5 lacks. But the Canon has a flip screen and Canon always taxes the cinematographers and the cinema line of stuff just a lot. It's just like the filmmaker tax where they just gouge you for no good reason. And that honestly, that tax is a big part of the reason that so many videographers and filmmakers switch to using DSLR style cameras instead of traditional cameras. So would I switch to this if it comes out? Yeah, I would want to test it, but the ability to use a single camera for both my still shooting and vlogging, things like this, like one man video creation teams. If I could have a versatile camera that could do it all in my bag, yeah, I, in fact, I would buy two because you would need a backup. Then if one failed, I would never have to worry about one of my backup camera not being good enough for this particular type of work that I do. I'd like to hear in the comments what you think, like, would you switch to this? Do you think it's worthwhile? And what, what is a fair price? And while I'm at it, I get a lot of questions like, why don't you make tutorials anymore? Why is everything about gear? And it's hilarious to me because we make a lot of tutorials. We make a lot of stuff that's not about gear. And as soon as somebody asks that question, I know that they only watch our gear videos. But in fact, not only do we have free tutorials and non-gear stuff on our YouTube channel that you should scroll back to and watch, we have made a massive amount of content that we sell. And the reason we have to sell a lot of this educational content is it doesn't, just doesn't get that many views on YouTube. People would rather watch gear stuff. So to make it worthwhile to finance it, basically, we charge you a few bucks. We make it really inexpensive and then just give you a massive amount of content for the price as well as a full money back guarantee. So right now we're having a sale. Go to northrop.photo and you can check out all our educational materials and use the coupon code SPRING25 to get 25% off. Specifically, if you haven't read it, Stunning Digital Photography has been the number one photography book in the world for the last decade. More than a million people have used it to improve their photography and improving your skills like that are going to make a way bigger difference than buying the latest camera gear. Storytelling, lighting, composition, there's so much to it. It, the ebook is literally 10 bucks without the coupon, so it'll be cheaper than that. It includes 20 hours of video. We also have the really well-reviewed art and science of photography, which goes deeper than we can on YouTube with more than 10 hours of really intense philosophical video that's going to challenge you and make advanced photographers even better. And of course, taking and selling professional portraits for people who actually want to make money by capturing images. It covers the business side of it, learning how to sell big prints to your clients, contracts, mitigating risk, insurance, and it will actually help you make a living at photography. And of course, books, video books on Photoshop and Lightroom, each with more than 10 hours of video, hands-on practices, files you can try out. Um, check it all out at northrop.photo. And if you're not happy with something, you send me an email and you say, I would like my money back and I give you your money back. It doesn't happen often, but I'm always happy to do it because I want you to be 100% satisfied. Don't forget to subscribe when I actually review the Canon R5C as well as lots of upcoming tutorials and more. Thanks and bye.